Free. You're not. Yeah, you, he gets time. He gets time. So it's all good. All right. All right. So we're ready. We're still on time. All right. We're back. So we are back uh, with our PIPs, and we have now the Minority Enterprise Growth and Needs Study, the Megan Study, which I've already given you points on that. Uh, and <laughs> I just want to uh, take a minute and recognize some of the council members that we have with us today. We have Councilman uh, Bill Pridemore. He is in charge of the Metro Council budget process. We have Council Member Mina Johnson and we have Council Member Russ Pulley. We appreciate that you all joined us. Uh, I just want to say at the front end that uh, I appreciate all the work you put into this PIP and if it does not get funded today, it doesn't mean that it wasn't a great idea. Uh, it may need, mean that it just needs to be fleshed out more um, or that it will be funded in year two or three. So um, just start with that and I'm going to, you'll have seven minutes to present and then we'll have seven minutes to ask you questions and we will start that seven minutes now. Chris? Thank you, uh, and good afternoon. I am Zach Kelly, and um, since I don't know many of you at this table, uh, I should tell you that I work in the finance director's office, and that I, along with uh, our team, who I will introduce later on in the program, are here to present to you the Minority Enterprise Growth and Needs Study. Uh, for the sake of time, I will refer to the program uh, by its acronym, MEGAN, which is a total coincidence. Uh, don't, don't read anything into it. <laughs> no, reading nothing into it. So what exactly is a minority business enterprise? The technical definition of a minority business enterprise, or an MBE for short, is a for-profit business that is 51% owned, operated, and controlled by a minority, and that has been certified uh, as such by a state or local municipality. Uh, but why is that certification important? Uh, that certification is important in Nashville because it allows you to access a number of services across uh, several metro government entities, which you you kind of see outlined on the slide, but it is a little bright uh, today. Those entities that are listed there, the Business Assistance Office, ECD, and EOEOEO, EOEO as I call them, because uh, they go on for a while, uh, are all the partners that you see represented at, uh, at the table. So what is the issue that MBEs uh, face? We are a growing, vibrant city. 81 people move here every day. We're on the top of every top 10 list. Uh, we are the it city, but we need to be the city that also gets that not everyone is sharing in the prosperity that we see. Uh, if you look at the numbers, black, Asian, Hispanic, and New Americans make up approximately 40% of Nashville's population, yet they own only around 18% of business enterprises. These MBEs that they do own are largely small business enterprises. And we know that last year the Kaufman study reported that Nashville was one of only two top four or one of only two top 40 metro areas where small businesses or where small business ownership actually declined, uh, the other being Charlotte. Unfortunately, just as our MBEs are underrepresented in the population, they are overrepresented uh, when we look at small business decline. When uh, Mayor Berry took office, the Nashville scene, who um, may or may not have always had the most affirming things to say during the campaign, called her inauguration one of the most inclusive events uh, in recent memory. In your hiring practices, in your board appointments, and in your inauguration, Mayor Berry, you have shown that diversity matters. Just like we need a government that reflects all of Nashville, we need a business community that reflects the diversity of our population, or at the very least, a climate where everyone has the equal opportunity to succeed. So what's the solution? How do we grow existing MBEs and foster entrepreneurship among this underrepresented group of Nashvillians? First, we need to know the landscape. Despite a bevy of disparity studies done by everyone from the Chamber of Commerce to the Airport Authority, we have very little data and even fewer solutions to this MBE gap. That's where the Megan study, that's where Megan, a year-long comprehensive field study of local MBEs and the business climate in which they operate can make a difference. By partnering with a local research university, Metro can study and collect a treasure trove of data on MBEs, including how current services might be streamlined, which groups are doing well, which groups are not, and in what part of town are they located, what are the barriers to growth that our current MBEs face, and what barriers keep minorities from starting new businesses at the same rate as their non-minority peers. And then we hope that they will come back to us with concrete steps that Metro can take to foster growth and a more just business climate. 
but why do we need a study? It seems like we always have studies. Don't we, don't we have enough of those already? Uh, but we believe in the maxim, as does the mayor, that what gets measured gets done. And we feel that for too long, interest groups in Nashville have studied the MBE gap from a 10,000 foot level. By contrast, the Megan study will be an in-depth, up-close look at our MBEs, providing both comprehensive data to examine the disparity and metrics against which we can measure the success of proposed solutions. It's a good looking group coming up here. Uh, the people in this photo are another reason that the Megan study is unique and will be successful. Economic and community development, economic opportunity and advancement, finance and the business assistance office all provide services to MBEs. Previous disparity studies have not included these groups nor drawn on their wealth of institutional MBE knowledge. Each group represented here is committed to leveraging our knowledge not only to help our research partner complete a truly representative study, but to build a long-term collaborative within Metro to address issues that are consistently faced by MBEs. And I hope Jackie Atberry is still here somewhere because I told her she showed up in our slide. Uh, but I work for finance, and so obviously I know you're going to want to know how much this costs. And our conversations with various research institutions leads us to believe that we can accomplish this study for less than $225,000. And since institutions who want to bid on this study will have to do, through, do so through an RFP process, it's quite possible that we'll come in uh, below that number. And just for comparison, when you look at disparity studies for similarly sized entities, they typically cost one to two hundred thousand uh, dollars more because they're done with private contractors and we're using um, a university research center. As to the benefit for citizens, there are 11,000 MBEs that operate uh, in the city of Nashville who stand to directly benefit from a study that allows Metro to better understand the needs and the problems that they face. Beyond that, however, all Nashvilleians benefit when we have an open and honest conversation about the MBE gap and take measure, measure, measurable steps to close it. I told you at the very beginning that the technical definition of an MBE, but behind that technical definition and behind the clinical talk of this MBE gap are people like those on this slide. People like Mr. Edward Hatch, uh, who told me that his biggest obstacle to expansion is access to capital. People like Ms. Brenda Odom, whose catering company is too small for big contracts, but who can't hire additional staff because she doesn't have access to that kind of credit line. And people like Ms. Elaine Reynolds, who runs a janitorial service, who can't expand because of systematic discrimination in the private lending system. There is a theme that develops there in case you're, in case you're, you're noticing it. The Megan study isn't just symbolic. The data that it provides holds the potential to change the lives of the persons on that slide that I've mentioned along with countless others. We sincerely hope that you will take this opportunity to show again that diversity matters whether you're talking about in the halls of Metro or in the corridors of commerce within the city. So with that we will take your questions. Perfect I was going to say that was like rock on the top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shocked. Um, I'll, I'll throw it over. Yeah, this is my area. I wallow in all day, so you all cut me off. And you go <laughs> something. Okay. Um, there, there are seven universities here in town that all have entrepreneurial types programs. Why wouldn't you ask them to collaborate on your study rather than picking one because you might actually get it almost for free? Because you we, shame them if they don't participate in some way. And it, it's our hope that, that that is our hope. That's the outcome that we hope comes from this. Um, one of the reasons that we, we consulted with a number of universities, one of the reasons that we didn't name a specific partner is A, we felt from a procurement standpoint it would be better to open it up and be that if we did not have a specific partner that we left open the possibility uh, when we put together the RFP that we could ask for that type of collaboration and consider that when we were awarding the contract. Something to consider, the Entrepreneur Center gets funded federally with the EDA, it gets funding from the state and funding from the city. It could be a neutral Switzerland to convene all seven universities to participate for you so that you could use your funds for something different. I'm not trying to minimize your funding, but to actually go pilot something and get the minimize study the minimize the funding requirement okay I'm just checking um, I, I see
sit on the Secretary of Commerce uh, National Council f for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Uh, we've already identified across the country the number one reason minority businesses don't get uh, funded, uh, don't get out of the ground is access to capital. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you were going to find that to be your number one as well at the end of the study. So is there some things we could do to actually focus on the kinds of access to capital? Because you will find, I can already imagine the top three, you, your state will absolutely validate it, but we've already spent hundreds of thousands of dollars validating that that is the number one problem for minority businesses is access to capital. Um, the question is how do we be creative about getting them access to capital. Um, the second is that they have the concept to launch the business, they can't get their first customer. So how do we get them their first customer? And then the third is if they even know how they, how they would do the business, then how do you run a business? And there's very little coursework on how do you run a business. And it seems to me that that we put those three together, we could have a winning recipe for a minority community. But, but just some food for thought for you. Though. Sure. No, I mean, I, and I, that's the that you know uh, that's the kind of input that we hope to get in the study. The, the main thing that we hope to get, one of the main things we hope to get from the study is a baseline from which we can look at those issues specific to Nashville because we just don't have a good baseline. We don't even have a great baseline of what MBEs that we have operating within the city now. How would you go about uh, wanting their university groups to do that? Do they go door to door and interview people or what are you thinking? The, the conversations that we have had is that this would be a comprehensive field study and it would, con it would uh, be comprised of two different parts. The first part would be the kind of overall survey. The second part would be actual field work where yes, we did have people going out into the community so identifying like the takers. It would be almost exactly like a census taker. Okay. And it's a finite period, so it's a year. Yes, ma'am. So the funding pass is just a one-off. Mm -hmm. Then potentially based on whatever the findings are, then that would be the next opportunity to come back and okay, right. make an initial. Yeah. Zach mentioned the yes. disparity study, which we've spent right. a fair amount of money on over the last several years and to support the procurement of non-discrimination. How, how is this different? That's yeah, what I'm that's having, a, I'm having a hard time understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, disparity studies that are conducted typically are a statistic statistical analysis of what's available in terms of the types of products and services that an entity will buy versus who they're actually using. And so the scope of this study I think is going to be uh, broader because we're looking at more than just those kinds of businesses who are you know, pitching their, their goods to Metro, but we're looking at the landscape as a whole. And kind of the way that I you know, think about it is we've demonstrated leadership, I think, for the national community as a whole about the use of minority businesses, but we're talking about who are these other businesses that are out there that can often either pitch to each other. So we're not really talking about, well, a part of this is Metro buying, what Metro buys, but it's much broader than it's, it's absolutely, getting into the community. It's absolutely. There's a lot of stuff we don't touch. Metro would Absolutely, and it okay. causes, the, in my opinion, the economy as a whole will be okay. boosted by it, okay. not just the economy that's fed by Metro. The conversation we've had is you can't, we can't, procurement is not going to be the only, it can't be the only hold. solution that we have for minority businesses. Absolutely. We don't spend all right. the money. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Uh, let me and, uh, may I ask it one more because I'll watch please. your time here. The, is the objective to get more minority businesses formed or is it to help the ones we have grow? It's a, it's a two-fold approach. The first thing we want to do is we want different problems. Right. No, they're, they're absolutely two different problems. The first thing that we want to know is we want to know how we can help the existing minority businesses uh, right. succeed and expand. The second thing we want to know is we want to look at why is it that Nashville has seen historic growth in young people in entrepreneurship, in women in entrepreneurship, but we haven't seen the kind of growth among minorities in the same demographic groups. Mm -hmm. And that is the kind of issue that we need to have a serious conversation about because there's an entire demographic of the population that's being left out of the prosperity that we see in the previous two groups that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. I was sick all the time, which is really, I think is a great idea in terms of trying to collaborate with uh, the entrepreneurship center. It could be a great neutral uh, convener and uh, would really assist us in this process. And I and I want to I want to make a, a, a pitch just to keep my funding or try to get it. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> which is yeah. uh, which is uh, which is that certainly we want to we want to collaborate with anyone and we want to do this in the most cost effective way uh, for Metro, but we're talking about two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, which has a potential economic impact for communities in this or for people in this community who have not seen the kind of impact that we have seen in other economic uh, investment areas. And I think that I think that that community, as much as anything, needs to see that Metro is invested in their success. Absolutely. And we as a team are dedicated to using our time and our department resources to uh, to support that. And we think that it would be um, appropriate for Metro to invest the dollars in this study. Even if we are uh, we are partnering with a third party entity, we think certainly Metro is is the neutral arbiter uh, in the situation. And that's why we have structured it the way that we, that we have. And, and I'm just going to push back on you just for a second, Zach. Yes, I, I think if there's an opportunity to get the study done in a collaborative way through the EC without investment of those $225,000, but to take that $225,000 and find another way to invest it because that's exactly the way we yeah. Um, maybe as some of those components that we already have identified, access to capital. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, for instance, the EC has a program called Pre-Flight, where people have an idea for a business, get to come in and figure out how to turn it into one. We have very few minorities because they can't afford the tuition. Um, we have a program called Catalyst. It helps small businesses that have under 200000 revenue grow to a million. It has a 50% success rate. It's almost all white because they can't afford the tuition. If we could use, if we, if we fund it, but we say if we could get the study done and we could use the excess capital for tuition support mm -hmm. for people, then we could help start. I mean, maybe there's a grow. way to pay that money to the Entrepreneur Center in a way that, I, I don't know. But, I mean, these are great or some, ideas. Or some tuition match is with other partners. I'm so I'm not suggesting we eliminate the plan. I'm just saying right, access to capital that. is going to be the big problem. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. And then we're going to need to figure out how do we help these folks get access to capital to get their idea out with their first customer and grow their business. Yeah. And that's why we'll be back next year to ask for a million dollars. Oh. <laughs> Shout out on, on this. I mean, all the pips are interesting. All of them come, I think, with interesting ideas. But I love it when somebody comes with a problem that we want to solve that is innovative on how we're going to solve it and uh, and moving forward that actually impacts a population that uh, has not been served in Nashville. So I appreciate and that. the great deal of credit on this goes to, to Ashford and Michelle and, and Audra and Jervall. I am I am simply. The presenter. I'm simply the presenter. I'm sure he is. All right, y'all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much.